Let me ask you a question. Out of the following two choices, which one would you pick if you had to choose one concept for the rest of your life? Small business owner or founder of Apple? One million dollars cash or one million loyal followers? This journey begins with a basic concept of the human being. Achievement, affiliation, power. This is the three needs model by American psychologist David McClelland. According to that, every human being is driven by achievement, power, and affiliation. Do you know what you're predominantly driven by? Throughout this video, you will notice how these motives are embedded in the different types of success levels of entrepreneurship. Now that you have some context, let's delve into the entrepreneurial levels of success. Level 1. The Small Business, The Lone Ranger $800 million that's roughly the yearly global revenue of the Roland Berger Holding, a German-based management consultancy. The founder is a guy called Roland Berger. He started this major firm at age 30. Is that what you call a small business though? No. So why would you be looking at him then? Well, at age 25, Roland Berger was still busy finishing his business degree. However, at the time, he started operating a laundry business as a student. He had 15 employees and later on successfully sold this business for 600,000 mark, which is very roughly $330,000. And only after that he started the predecessor of today's major consultancy at age 30. The laundry business of Roland Berger is a perfect example of a small business and he was able to pull it off at a young age. Talking about money. Besides Silicon Valley cliche billions, there's tons of more money in the market for you to acquire. And yet, operating a small business won't make you super rich unless you scale it or sell it like Roland Berger did. Small business salaries don't have a standard, so they can range anywhere from as little as 5200k or $200,000 a year. Either way, you wouldn't pay out more in salaries to yourself than 50% of net profits for the most part. At this level, nothing is fancy and you will realize entrepreneurship is amazing and everything, but not fancy. You work on a product or service, go into the acquisition of the first clients and reinvest the profits to either buy more assets to scale the business, like dryers for the laundry shop, or use the money to market your brand, buy ads on social media, hire people, or buy out industry experts if possible. Don't get me wrong, you can dream about billions and funding rounds, but what you need is getting more volume in your career development. Starting small businesses can be your chance to get a foot in the door gain experience with little risk at a young age. You more or less conservatively build a profitable business. Also, this level one is your first success. Regardless of the outcome, you have officially subscribed to the journey. It's now part of your entrepreneurial track record. On a side note, most of the entrepreneurs that you have never heard of acquired serious wealth building businesses that are not fancy and neither cool. They operate logistics companies, recycling companies, agencies, multiple engineering offices. It's the opposite of what social media sells you as a dream. It's simple, profitable businesses at scale, period. To sum it up, this level of success will give you freedom to operate as your own boss, run it on your terms, no fights with co-founders or partners, and also small business is conservatively predictive, meaning it is slightly easier to screen the competition, ideally easier to understand the logistics and dynamics of the company. It has its limitations though. You have less reach, less influence, and not much power for now. You may also be more dependent on economic cycles and direct customers. But you want more. You still have capacity and hunger to push your limits. So you reach for the next level. Level 2. The successful startup. Success at this level is rooted strongly in achievement-driven personalities, as well as a certain level of affiliation. Based on starting as a small business, this level of entrepreneurial success is defined by building a team and culture in alignment with a bigger vision. Instead of building a cash cow for you to leverage your career, you're now leading a mission. According to different statistics, the average age of startup founders is anywhere between 39 and 45 years. If you're under age 30 or even under age 40, just shut up because you got time as long as you're productive. Fun fact, if you are a 40-year-old startup founder, you are 2.1 times more likely to found a successful startup compared to your 25-year-old self. 
talking about founding companies, it's probably every entrepreneur's dream to reach unicorn status. A private company surpassing the $1 billion valuation. Especially nowadays, it looks like we are flooded with unicorns and billion dollar companies. By the way, famous unicorns before they went public include Google, Airbnb and Uber. SpaceX even surpassed the $100 billion valuation, making it a hectacorn. But back to you. Wouldn't you be a lone ranger starting a small business when seemingly everyone is building unicorns and decacorns? Definitely not. The opposite is the case. Even though there are more unicorns than ever before, it's just 1200 worldwide. And out of all businesses in the US, what percentage do you think are small businesses? 50%? 75%? More? The answer is more than 99.7% are considered small businesses based on having less than roughly 500 employees and other criteria. As for your startup career, at this point you're also operating under the radar when it comes to mainstream reach. However, you will spend time building a brand for the business, get exposure through LinkedIn and social media, as well as through live events for entrepreneurs and startups. You will probably hop on the plane and travel to connect with like-minded people in cities like New York, Berlin, Tel Aviv and various other startup hubs. You will get yourself in front of potential customers at fairs, join more events and occasionally have interviews talking about you as a founder and about your business. The attention you can get, you would try to convert to brand and product sales. And even though we live through an era where college and university have less and less relevance, you can't deny the fact that many startup stories start as some sort of university project. There once was a research project in 1996 at Stanford University. The work on it was done by two PhD students, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. That project was later called Google. And even if it simply means you meet your co-founders in class, leave the uni and start your own business, the university environment played a critical role at that point. Of course, that definitely doesn't mean you can't start a business or connect with other entrepreneurs without a college education. But don't deny some of the opportunities you can literally use college for. Until you say goodbye, graduate or drop out. Level 3. The Serial Entrepreneur, Online Entrepreneur influencer. The next level of entrepreneurial success can already be a big deal. And you can get to this level without having successfully exited a startup. This is just a different level because the trade-off between upsides and downsides works in your favor. It's the online entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, influencer. At this point you have multiple income streams and ventures running. If one falls apart, you easily have enough support from other sources of income. You have built a brand that is above and beyond trading money for time. Also, you have a community. May even be famous to some degree, but not to the level of having no private life. While you are still very achievement driven by pushing for more business and reputation, you also get to enjoy some of the favors of successful startups and celebrities. Why? Because you now have a network and a community. You earn well over six figures, potentially seven figures a year, and you have your space of operating all those dreams on your terms. That's money, approval, and freedom. But where's the catch? The catch is getting there, because most people can barely sustain hard work with minimal reward over a longer period of time. It's the countless hours of learning, putting out content the audience finds valuable and persevering throughout dry periods and frustration of getting no traction in the first place. This journey isn't an overnight success either. It takes years to build enough momentum. There's no instant gratification in most cases, but it is doable and once it's there and things pick up, you're basically set for life. Not just in terms of money, but also freedom and joy of waking up to something you genuinely like to do and being able to do it the way you want to do it. A perfect example is Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. Beast. 
He's the definition of a successful YouTuber, but more importantly, he built a business empire in the most genius way. And this journey is for you regardless of whether you choose YouTube or other outlets to gain traction for yourself as a brand. After having grinded without much traction for 5 years on the platform, he persevered, improved and went all in on YouTube as a business. He completely doubled down on two things. Providing as much entertainment value as possible and getting as much attention as possible. Once things picked up, he reinvested almost everything back into his YouTube business, increasing value and getting even more attention. Through YouTube alone, that paid off in millions of ad revenue and sponsorship deals, monthly. That money, back into the business again. Through dedication, value and insane acts of kindness, most of the over 130 million followers were loyal followers. So based on all the giving he has done for free, it wasn't a big deal to now get people to buy more value from Mr. Beast now as actual products. Jimmy started multiple sub-brands off his main brand, including Feastables and Beast Burger, the latter easily making over $100 million in revenue, and various other ventures. With his empire and intuition, he's on to becoming the world's first billionaire YouTuber. The valuation for his brand has definitely suppressed the $1 billion mark already. Now, let's admit, we should have rather placed Mr. Beast onto the next level of success. But for a long time, Beast was a perfect example for an online serial entrepreneur coming from an influencer standpoint as a YouTuber. Level 4. The Grey Zone Level. When the power-driven side is being fulfilled. We are just crossing a barrier. The barrier of being very publicly exposed to more pressure, judgment and external expectations. Let's call it mainstream success barrier. Look at Jordan Peterson. Do you remember? Back when he was just a clinical psychologist, posting his lectures on YouTube. Back then, he turned into something like a niche celebrity, being praised by his community for a good reason because his clinical work is insanely inspiring and useful. If we fast forward, Peterson eventually made it to mainstream success, his YouTube channel alone having surpassed 6 million subscribers. From media interviews to political involvement, meeting politicians, to spreading his lessons across the world, Jordan Peterson received more attention, more wealth, more following. And yet, it didn't take long until he also received more criticism. For example, when he met with Netanyahu, Israel's Prime Minister, even more hate and his views got way more challenged by a variety of parties. If it's the wealth that his entrepreneurial journey is creating, it looks great. He's making $80,000 a monthly on Patreon and his business makes him roughly $200,000 a month. Additionally, he makes money off the thousands of books he sells every week, plus speaking fees, etc. Besides Jordan Peterson, whether you like them or not, Logan and especially Jake Paul are two more examples of this level of success. With their massive platform, a skill to provoke and draw attention, they have leveraged their way into multiple ventures and additionally positioned themselves as more mainstream. From ad revenue to merchandise making millions in revenue in very little time to more brand deals and sports careers. If you achieve this level of entrepreneurial success, materialistic freedom increases immensely while personal freedom seems to decrease again. The level that you're not only working for yourself and your little team has reached its expiry date. The chip on your shoulder are investors, employees, directors, fans, media and your public reputation at scale. Whatever the hell you do. Level 5 the founder turned corporate executive. These people are strongly driven by achievement and power. Achievement, because there's no other way to get this far without being obsessed with performance, and power, because the CEO position of public companies comes at a cost, and that's responsibility. As a result, the power comes with it. At this stage, you are way past small businesses. You left the startup path behind and at least with the business and corporate world, you have enough influence. The brand you have built turned into a serious one in the public markets. 
we're talking about running billion dollar companies. Founders who took the CEO position afterwards include Steve Jobs or Richard Branson. At this point, it's not only about running the business itself. Corporate executives often subscribe to having more responsibilities and money isn't the only driver. Influence and power are becoming more important. What we are referring to is political power. Lobbying impacting macroeconomic and social structures. Thus, if you hold a senior executive position in one company, you're very likely to also sit in the board of multiple other companies. It's not a secret, for example, an automotive executive would also be part of the board in energy companies or industrial engineering corporations. What they want is access and influence so that they can leverage it in their best interest. People at this level are being invited to exclusive circles. They attend conferences such as the Bilderberg Conference, basically an off-the-record get-together of high-ranking business people and politicians discussing the topics that drive and shape the world's dynamics. The ultimate satisfaction if you are power-driven? As mentioned, it's politics. When you want to exceed the access and reach that your business gave you in the first place, you become politically active, just like Silicon Valley mogul Peter Thiel. You invest more time and especially financial assets into the political entities you want to be part of. The founder of PayPal and Palantir, billionaire investor Peter Thiel, is a well-known example here. He became active as Donald Trump's advisor and supported his past and present campaigns with millions of dollars. And if you back up a position of power like that, you can be sure that your influence is being priced into that at some point. The upside of this level of entrepreneurial success? Clearly the power, the exclusive access to some of the most elite people and events, including more political leverage and more wealth to your name. Good or bad, if you want to be involved in changing macro structures of economy or society to the favor of your ideology, this is the level closest to achieving that. It's almost like you have found a way into the world's back office. Sounds a little scary, I know. What's the cost? The pressure on you is insane because you are in a highly competitive environment. If you're on top, you have everyone else after you. And besides being smart and hardworking, these sharks are hungry as well. There will be committees voting or not voting for you. Your performance is upon frequent evaluation. And if you fail at some point, you will fail publicly and will be held accountable, including your reputation that may suffer. Level 6. The Celebrity Entrepreneur This level combines everything from achievement first, power, and affiliation, partially to fuel the power motive. The last category of entrepreneurial success is the celebrity entrepreneur. We're bringing up celebrities as the final stage because at this point of entrepreneurship, success and fame, we are starting to have business people becoming mainstream celebrities. Elon Musk being a perfect case, Jeff Bezos another one. Steve Jobs used to be a good example too and he's still a kind of is. The final stage involves all of it. Extreme wealth, nothing less than billions, political power, often at the cost of massive criticism, an insane following of superfans and a cult around the entrepreneur himself. If we flip the order, we see structures like that in people like Kanye West, gaining mainstream fame first, building brands and companies for wealth and reach and then pushing into politics. These are people who already acquired a level of fame in their fields as athletes, artists, actors. Whether this applies to you or not, it's a phenomenon worth watching because the celebrity entrepreneur is a perfect example of constantly reinventing yourself, pushing for more and having different types of careers, various fields that cross their agenda every single day. Watching them almost feels like a message saying you don't have to be stuck, you can change and there is no need for only pursuing unidimensionality in careers. And besides the obvious advantages of having more money than you could ever spend, being famous and having influence, the disadvantages of this level of success are not to underestimate either. 
Elon Musk is constantly being criticized, his views challenged, and his public image jumps from peaks to rock bottom within a single Twitter post, which he bought, resulting in more fame and more hate. Furthermore, he occasionally isn't considered sane, his projects are frequently being attacked by petitions, all while constantly praised as the genius who gets done whatever he puts his crazy mind to. Extreme is a good term to describe these levels of success, extreme in many ways, good or bad. More examples? Well, Will Smith who slapped Chris Rock on live TV is an example here as well. Imagine having dedicated all of your life to building this level of success and legacy only to crush it in a single second? The slightest mistake you make, the smallest deviation of what's socially accepted and you being called out, hated or cancelled. Mental health issues, drug abuse, depression and suicide. And once you messed up, you cannot simply apologize or wipe out the wrongdoing. Because that's not how information processing works. The more a topic is being addressed, the deeper it's rooted in people's minds. Once it's out, you cannot take it back. And as corporate executive or celebrity entrepreneur, this is the price you have to pay. Be aware that exceptional status is not nothing. The biggest highs come at a cost and most people should probably not pay the price. You may suffer way more than the millions and the admiration are worth. Because regardless of how much you acquire, life is always worth more. Another very popular, as well as the most bankable stars, is Dwayne Johnson. After his wrestling career, he became the highest paid movie star and went all the way to being a successful entrepreneur. He owns a production company, created a successful tequila brand, sells his own energy drink and even acquired his own football league, the XFL. He's very active on social media, he's the most followed American on Instagram and probably consulted people like Gary Vee to support his business strategy. His movies and TV shows have easily surpassed multi-billions of dollars and Johnson has become a global entertainment entrepreneur. He keeps reinventing ways he can provide value and cash in on that remarkably well. And besides entertainers or entrepreneurs themselves, there are plenty of athletes who successfully started business careers. One of them is none other than Portuguese football legend Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the legend who surpassed well over half a billion Instagram followers, earning more than two million dollars per sponsored post on the platform. That's the point where you earn almost half a Bugatti Chiron per Insta post. Besides countless brand deals, he owns his fashion label CR7 including CR7 footwear and CR7 denim. As part of a joint venture, he's also invested in his own hotel chain, Pistana CR7, and holds a 50% stake in the hair transplantation business. As you see, once you reach a certain level of brand recognition and equity, you can pretty much push into any field with the right team around. Coming back to the question now, what do these level 6 people have in common? In a world of government regulations, pump and dump schemes on public markets, inflation rates off the charts, and gurus exploiting young people, these people above have you and me and everyone else. What they have is an immaterial asset that can barely be taken away from them, at least much harder than any other assets. They have two things that drive their success, wealth and sustainable power. First, they have brand recognition and second, the ability to make product from that. It is no secret that the currency of this era of the 21st century is attention and brand in alignment with a good reputation. This is where the circle completes. Fame and reach isn't the requirement for brand. You can start putting out something you somehow like and you're good at and then build your small brand. Once it gets bigger, you may end up with more reach, a little fame and that allows you to grow the brand even more. That's what these celebrities do at scale. Some of them reinvest all the time because something as replaceable as money can always be taken out of the business to fuel materialistic fantasies. So next time you are aiming for the stars, at least be humble and respect the price and sacrifice to get there. The shiny good life has an abyss that costs nothing less than some people's soul, health and well-being. If you're up for the challenge of taking that path and grow into that, do it. But do it with gratitude for your current level of success. Taking action means you're already at level 1, not at 0. That will not only increase your current happiness, it will also make you enjoy the journey more. The person you have to become to be able to carry the burden of even aiming for exceptional status is impressive itself. If you want instant gratification, 
Get it by acknowledging that these levels of success aren't for everyone. Not only the results, even crossing the barriers along the way is an insane achievement. Not even 20 years ago, many of the opportunities we nowadays have didn't even exist. Back then, you could start a company or go corporate. Today, you can start a company, build a brand regardless of your track record, or do both and go corporate. The barriers from choosing one path over another and sacrifice opportunities are fading. You can bypass all gatekeepers and connect with an audience right now. Now go out and act. Start a small conservative business. Network your way into the startup environment. Climb the corporate ladder if it's for you and then leave. Meanwhile, start building your brand online and let a broader audience be part of your entrepreneurial journey. Whether it's entertainment, business or rock climbing, you are also an entrepreneur and you are also a media company. Because the ability to connect with people is a core part of being an entrepreneur. Whether you are achievement, affiliation or power driven, every business consists of people. Start there. On all levels, this is as entrepreneurial as it gets. Enjoy your journey.